So this is Jeff Goins and my brother-in-law Dave Mirez, and we are doing an install of the Stellar Cat on a 24-inch Tektron scope. And we've removed the rocker box, uh, taken off the ground board, and all the electronics that are already in the scope. And our first thing was how to make a three-quarter inch hole a one-inch hole. And what we've decided to do is we've taken a, just a piece of stock and we've used our Forster bit and drilled a uh, one-inch hole in it to use as a guide. And Dave is countersinking some holes there and we're going to put it in the rocker box and uh, get that lined up as precisely as we can. We think we've got a couple ways to do that. But I think eyeball will actually be pretty good. And of course, we've got our little drill guide uh, that Dave already had and we're going to use that to drill this hole bigger. We'll probably do the drilling on the floor and everything. We just got it up on the table because it was easier to use screws on the table. Alright, so we'll uh, get back when we actually start drilling that new hole. So what we've done here is that there's actually the, the bushing that comes with this fits in that one inch hole and the, the center port of it, portion of it is three quarter inches. I already had a three quarter inch hole in the base of my scope so we're just going to put that in there and uh, line it up using that with probably a three quarter inch uh, dowel or something and uh, and then screw this thing down and pull that bushing out and then use the board as a guide to cut our new hole. I just feel so, like four is the key. What we ended up doing was just using the, uh, the new center pivot is three quarter inches and it fits inside the bushing. Fits down through my hole we were able to center this little jig that we've made up to get a, a good center hole uh, for the new center bushing. And Dave is screwing this down, then we'll pop this out of there and drill it with our Forstner bit. So we've got our center pivot fixed here and we're using the ground board together just to get the measurement and everything of the uh, where we need to put this on the edge. So we have the ground port board setting on the rocker box and we did a setter punch for the uh, the pivot, the pit, the the, put, the whatever that thing is, that big hole, and then the little hole here, and we went ahead and drilled the big hole, and we're just about to do the uh, pivot hole. Uh, that's the drive hole and the pivot hole. The pivot hole will be uh, right there. There's the where we did our center punch. And we've got a nice, nice smooth hole here, and hopefully we'll do the same for our pivot hole and uh, then we'll be following into the next bit of instruction. So we have both holes on the uh, bottom of the rocker box now, the pivot hole and the drive wheel hole. And then we've gone ahead here and drilled the, uh, the hole on the front for the, uh, the release clamp there, the clutch if you will. And it uh, looks like we're getting ready to install some of this stuff on the rocker box. Okay, so we got the uh, clutch mechanism in. The instructions said to drill a 9 16th inch hole, and we did, and it just kind of slid in and out, so we had to put some shavings in there with some wood glue to keep that in there tight, and it should it should stay. It, it, it fit perfectly, so evidently we have way too accurate a 9 16th inch portioner bit. Probably should have used a regular bit, but hey, we're perfectionists. And then now we've got the uh, the motor mounted in here, with the, uh, the knurled knob, the drive wheel on it underneath, as you can see, it fits pretty well. It looks like it's going to, to drive that just fine. Uh, everything clears just fine. And we're getting ready, it looks like, to uh, attach that to the clutch mechanism here. And uh, that's disengaged, engaged, obviously. And then we also made sure that this missed the wheel the drive wheel, not the drive wheel, the, uh, the wheelie bar for the telescopes, we put it on this direction for disengage and engage rather than the other way uh, just so that we'd have a little bit more clearance there. So here we have the uh, azimuth motor all installed, the encoder and the computer box just sitting there for now. Um, we've got the manual and engage position Oops, manual and uh, engage position set up and you can see how that moves from manual position uh, to engaged 
and when it's engaged we cannot move this so it, it's engaging well and then in manual we still have this nice smooth motion um, the encoder is set and like I said the computer box is just sitting there right now and we're getting set to move on to the altitude uh, setup and we're going to uh, remove these Teflon bearings and replace them with the new Teflon bearings and the motor is going to install right here. We may have to put a filler here. It looks like there's enough room there though to set this up. Tektron's kind of different. It's got this little frame system um, just to make it a little bit lighter rather than, than doing a full thickness around the whole outside. He, uh, he made this little panel with a kind of support system. One thing I do like though is the Teflon on the sides of the rocker box so if it does bind a little bit because you're not quite on level ground you actually get uh, some pretty smooth motion. So we'll get back to you when we start putting on the uh, azimuth motor here, or altitude motor, excuse me. Okay, so we've routed out our, uh, our Teflon with a Dremel tool. That worked pretty well. We opted to leave the screws in um, and just make a little channel in there. Uh, the screws are just keeping the Teflon from moving around. I don't think they're going to be a problem. They're already set down in uh, more than half of the depth of the Teflon anyway and we put the cable on there and it seems to work just fine so I think we'll be okay there now we're just trying to figure out how to do the cable and uh, where to put the motor placement. The motor's going to go back on that corner Dave's just cleaning the Teflon with a little bit of uh, steel wool makes it nice and slick yeah it gets the dirt out of it anyway and then uh, once we figure all that out we're almost done Okay, so we have our altitude motor installed, and the way it ended up, there was just enough room here between the edge of the Teflon and everything to get a good bite with the screws. So we kind of, that kind of dictated where we're going to go here. We, so we have a little bit larger gap where the uh, roller is than a quarter, but the instruction said a quarter was probably too small anyway. Let's do that. We got our cable, and we're just trying to figure out where to put the cable exactly. Um, you know, obviously you don't want it to interfere with the Teflon, you know, when you lean the scope all the way down. And so we'll find out exactly where to attach that and uh, we should be just about done here.